Is it impossible for us to say that at some point in the ancient past that beings existed that were not part of this earth, yet we are of them? Could a race of intelligent beings have once roamed this planet, perfecting it for the eventuality of life? If you consider that us humans were not always of this earth, that we are here for reasons that we do not know yet, then you must consider that this world was prepared for our arrival. Our creators would not just have dumped us here, there would have been preparations, and maybe this is why we can explain certain things like the moon, the pyramids, or even life on Earth as we know it. These things constantly surprise and confound us. We know we have not always been here. We know there are things of this Earth that are older than our current stretch of consciousness, and we know there are gods. The only misconception is identity, who we are, who are the gods, and why the hell are we here? Wait till you hear this. We must constantly surmise that we are here, therefore we are. But it is starting to unravel. Whatever made us think that this way must have been a computerized program. A brainwashing. Something that would keep us in check for our own protection. But we are beginning to break free from the chains. No longer are we willing to accept that from the cradle to the grave, our only goal is to live out our life here on this planet. From the first of our civilization, the truth was well hidden yet embedded deep into human consciousness. It is in our soul. As generations go by, as do the centuries, our lifespan increases. Our mind expands and begins to wonder. And the more we become aware, not only of our surroundings here on Earth, but also of our place in the universe, then this block that is stopping the truth is wearing off. As we attempt to realize who we are, the knowledge of already knowing this becomes apparent to us. This is the great epiphany. The sudden realization that, as humans, we already know the answers. But the awareness of the answers is something we are yet to realize. Hence, all the curiosity. Why are we here is confounding. But consider the beings that got this planet ready for us. There surely was a group of beings who would consider the gods who instructed this undertaking. Did they get their hands dirty? Imagine if they had robots. In Sardinia, there are beings depicted in rock known as giants of Monte Prama. They would have stood an astonishing 5 meters tall and are thought to be around 5,000 years old. The story of how these beings arrived in Sardinia is also depicted in stone, showing an upside-down robot entering Earth's atmosphere headfirst. You can see a corona around the entering body, which suggests these robots were made with strong metal for such an entry. And incredibly, on the stone, a long cigar-type craft also appears. It is an incredible depiction of how the Monte Prama giants came to the Earth. Some suggest it may not be the arrival, but rather the leaving of the robots to return to the mothership after humanity was settled. Who knows? What these beings are is unclear. Nowhere does it actually say they are robots, but they aren't human either. They wouldn't depict such things with uncharacteristic features if this was human. It is a true testament to the people of Sardinia, who seen it as essential to depict these creatures, and maybe it was that they came after the Great Flood to aid the survival of humanity, after the attempt to destroy the Nephilim. They were called the Mighty Ones of Old. They were physical giants, and they brought havoc and destruction upon the Earth. And this is what led to God's decision to bring the Flood. Even though the Bible teaches us that Noah and his family were the only humans to survive the Flood, ancient legends teach us that there were others who did survive in many other places. When we talk about the term Nephilim, it is associated with genetic hybrid entities. What this translates to is that they were part extraterrestrial. Part of that story involves the Great Flood. How the Great Flood came to occur is anomalous, one theory being that the Moon was not always there in Earth's orbit. When the moon came to Earth's orbit, it gave us the seasons and tides. Life prospered much more, but the arrival of the moon triggered the Great Flood. Could it be possible that these robots were placed on Earth to oversee this arrival? Could they have stayed for a while to test the moon's effectiveness, for example? How long was a moon orbit, and what other effects did it have on Earth? On Sardinia, these giant robot beings were plain for all to see. That is why they were depicted. But there is a building on this island that might just boggle your mind a little. The Well of Santa Cristina demonstrates such incredible masonry skill that archaeologists struggle to explain how it was built by so-called primitive people. Not only is it constructed beautifully, the foundation is below the water table, and that's very hard to do. 
And this well is really built to observe the moon in its highest light and what effects the moon is having on water. And it is dating to the same period in time that the giant robot depictions appear, with one exception. The well was built by the robots, and the robot depictions were built by observers of the robots. A celestial event known as the lunar standstill, the time when the moon reaches its highest point in the night sky and appears to stay there for hours until it finally descends, is what this well aligns with. It is incredible to think that this ancient well was built to observe the new attraction in our sky. But this appears to be the case. It not only traces moonlight, but also the movement of water, the two factors why the moon was brought to the Earth. If you consider that an ancient civilization, supposedly one without mathematics or even a written language, but was able to conceive of such a precise and ingenious method of tracking such a rare lunar cycle, one that likely occurred no more than once or twice in an average lifetime, the question is, how was this planned? Archaeologists and research experts are baffled by this. They are at a crossroads where, on one hand, they can admit that there was more going on in the distant past that is even beyond our wildest imagination, or they can keep dumbing down the facts they are presented with. It's clear that at Sardinia, we are presented with a place where something incredible was happening in ancient times, enough for them to then base their entire culture around the events. And then, afterwards, this became a place of worship. The place of worship only begins after something extraordinary happens, not before. That's it for now, guys. You can let us know in the comment section below what you are thinking. And always, thank you for watching.